can we rise up on our feet lord we bless you give him praise we give you all the glory we worship you Can we just lift up our hands and say, Lord, we thank you. We bless you inside and outside. Lift up your hands as we worship. Lord, we give you praise. You have done great things. Great things in our midst. Thank him for the miracles. Thank him for the manifestation of his word. Thank him for salvation. Lord, we give you praise. We come with grateful hearts. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who have been here for a while you understand that we are a grateful people hallelujah we'll never forget his benefits hallelujah psalm 103 says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits who forgiveth our sins who healeth our diseases and delivereth us from destruction and so Every time we come before his presence, it's good to just worship him and to give him praise for life, for health, for his word, access to his word. Hallelujah. Said the entrance of thy word, give it light. Light, understanding, even unto the simple. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Thank you because tonight you will do great things in our midst. We have come for koinonia, a time of intimacy. We pray that you speak from the throne and cause that our ears hear the voice of our King in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just walk up to 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you again. Your presence gives me hope that we are coming. Come on, walk up to 20 people inside and outside don't be antisocial is part of koinonia That's all right. You can go back to your seat. I appreciate the Lord. The Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for the things that God is doing in our midst. Hallelujah. God is doing great and awesome things. We've been celebrating the wonder-working power of God in our midst. Hallelujah. And the transforming power of His Word. We thank Him for the opportunity to receive from Him again. Hallelujah. We've been taking a series on the kingdom. And... Um, Angels.
angels still speak. Hallelujah. Where people who believe in the realm of the spirit and the operation of spirit beings. The Bible says, here I come to Mount Zion and it lets us know we are not alone. Hallelujah. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning and um, she said, Josh, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I had a dream and I got a song from that dream and I want to share it with you. I said, really? And she said, it was a dream. I was ministering somewhere and she was not even in the ground where the meeting was and she had the song it was a powerful song from the spirit and she heard my voice i was singing it and um it was so powerful according to her description she said the place was so charged there were all kinds of miracles people repenting opening up their hearts to the lord and um, when she woke up she came with a song and I want to teach us the song. Very powerful. It's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them. Hallelujah. Because we are a family. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing the song. I'd like you to receive it in your spirit. Many of you just like new songs. Thank God for the next one. No, 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 no. You see, God gives songs to announce seasons. Hallelujah. Jewish songs were used to announce seasons so when you heard a Jew sing it would give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in if it was a Passover they had songs if it was the day of atonement called Yom Kippur they had songs that they would sing and so I believe that this song came prophetically coinciding with the great things that God is doing in this season hallelujah very powerful song the song is a revelation of uh, Matthew 21 the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, Holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Worship us, can you help me? Holy, oh, holy, just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. On and heated, we didn't change it exactly as it came from the realm of the stars. In the name of our God, sing holy, 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 blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, sing Hosanna, 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 blessed is he. Who comes in the name of God? Hosanna, 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 who comes in the name? Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy. Can you sing it? Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes 
sing the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah. Blessed is he who comes. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, yeah. Let's just help the worshippers sing holy. Just the worshippers, help me worship us. Holy, holy, blessed is He. It was a triumphant entry in the name of our God. And he rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song coincides with the season, God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant entry, riding upon a horse. And that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. One more time. Hosanna, Hosanna. 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 Can we rise up on our feet to just sing it one more time? Holy, holy now. Come on, let's raise up our voices and sing. Holy, holy, holy. The city is he who comes in the name of God. Sing holy, holy, holy. You are holy. The city is he who comes in the name of God. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. family of faith we understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit unedited to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Habana Copra Negade. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Oh, let it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. 
that it be done on earth as it is in the heavens until you understand the operation of the heavens you have no right to do anything on the earth and it's our job here at koinonia to listen habakkuk chapter 2 says i will stand upon the watch my watch and set myself upon the tower and i will see what the lord will say the bible says what i show you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top and it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the father to hear what he's communicating for every season god is preparing us training us fashioning us by his spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season and hear me friends if you found your way into this place i'd like you to know that god brought you by his spirit to build to equip to empower you he said rule thou in the midst of thy enemies it takes understanding he said he made many lights but he made two great lights one light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night if you don't have that light you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night there is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule and god is communicating these lights and these truths unto us and father we thank you it's a privilege and we respect it we don't just believe in you we respect you thank you father in the name of jesus god bless you please be seated we began a series last week on the kingdom hallelujah how many of us were blessed last week praise god we began to establish please take out your pen your writing materials it's a teaching so as much as possible whenever you're coming for a meeting like this come with your writing materials god is teaching and building us there's only so much your mind can at a time blessed be the name of the lord and so i began a teaching last week and i began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom how that the word kingdom comes from two words it means the domain of the king hallelujah how many of us still remember that and we began to explain how that in the system of god the kingdom of god is everywhere the influence and the, the authority the rulership the dominion of the king is exercised is permitted to find expression hallelujah and we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland how many of you remember that we began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom and that every time a colony is created it is created either by conquest you fight and gain access to that colony or you find a virgin land and occupy it hallelujah the a colony is is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom and i did tell us that in a kingdom system everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king hallelujah in a democracy we have people living for themselves for instance in america you can decide to walk up naked i can decide to walk naked tomorrow and when people say josh are you okay i said what is your business we are in a democracy but in a kingdom system everyone lives for the king hallelujah if at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king you were termed a rebel hallelujah and i began to explain to us that we are not just believers we are not just born again christians but we are citizens of a kingdom hallelujah and that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our savior not just to our lord but to our king many know him as savior many know him as lord but few know him as king and daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end and god is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are not partnering with the holy spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the lord 
and then we began to explain how that man was given dominion adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and adam lost and gave the keys to satan hallelujah and i did tell us that the entire bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of god i told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus it was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not god's original design for the nation of israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were a stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told samuel to go and anoint saul and then david and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of israel understood the concept of kingdom and then jesus showed up john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god hallelujah and when jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of god is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracles signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and i did tell us that jesus for our sake he came to restore the kingdom hear me the primary purpose of jesus was not to come and take us to heaven don't stone me yet it's a teaching hallelujah the primary purpose of jesus was to restore the kingdom to restore the kingdom that's why revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall rule in this life in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah and then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth 
is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter 1 says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter 1 down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that govern the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to run into heaven we are not staying very long here we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts god is reorienting us so that we understand that christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen i will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay i like the rendition in amplified the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom the systems of this world the word world here is the greek word cosmos the social system of the world he said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open hallelujah i'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that jesus came to restore the kingdom say after me jesus christ came to restore the kingdom and he did restore the kingdom say one more time jesus christ came to restore the kingdom hallelujah 
and not just to restore the kingdom but to restore the citizens of that kingdom hallelujah that's why he died that's why he went through everything he went through jesus christ bled and he cried he wept was beaten by cruel and wicked people he went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us hallelujah and the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored the next step is to receive the kingdom hallelujah say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom how do you receive the kingdom by embracing the king of that kingdom hallelujah that's what we call being born again hallelujah being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom so when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing we're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom hallelujah that's why you come up and say lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me and he said i declare that you are lord of my life hallelujah lord of my life you are the king i choose to submit to your governing authority thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom and every time you make that decision as a proof he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life it is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us but he can live in us hallelujah the holy spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom hallelujah hallelujah are you following me now very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because he that home by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as a non-believer the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do and we say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you, you you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah 
brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says the whole, when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost work on your mindset say after me mindset when he works upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us to understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattered and yet increased it. there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty and is antagonistic to the ways of the world hallelujah and the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything he allows your will to come into play so you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him and it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit and god designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor he said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further 
we get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you fall under the anointing. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You just turn and then you get born again. And then many people just stop there. So what is it about praying in tongues and just moving? And then they say, just keep praying. There's a real devil in this kingdom. Just keep praying. And the person says, okay, so I'm praying in tongues. And he's just praying. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What is the prayer? To what end? Hallelujah. To what end is our Bible study? To what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning are you following me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of God's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda thank you Jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see God does God cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when God calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now God is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement 
so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again it tells you we are in the same kingdom you say no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around god is not teaching us denomination and dogma he's teaching us kingdom are you following me now that the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seatmate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one yoruba person one Igbo person and then one northern and quickly quickly three people let's do that quickly quickly yoruba Igbo. please come come up three of you no 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 hallelujah Aaron is from Kaduna State she's from the East and Ejimi is from the what West now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a Yoruba person especially a, a well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture I follow me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah I listening to me and then for the Igbos they have I we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of god that we had on sunday in pastor williams house I appreciate them you don't know what i appreciate them <laughs> hallelujah i ate a very delicious soup called in salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise god and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport i see somebody just proceed ah are you a she? And then you just greet, you know, you just bow here and all of that. I say, Are you a Yoruba? That's nice. It connects you. Are you following me now? Please, I'm trying to communicate a message. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, as citizens of the kingdom, please, I'm trying to communicate a message. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, as citizens of the kingdom, we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly. Are you listening to me? When you see a Yoruba person, you know instantly. When you see an Igbo person, even if a Yoruba person wears kaftan, his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing. Very quickly. You just know this is a Yoruba person. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? How come there are many Christians and there are few kingdom citizens? It tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have. We have many believers across many churches and many Christians. But the world is still contending whether Jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me 
that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah their dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were jews god bless you please sit down hallelujah so our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture now the word culture is not a demonic word i know that um in our nigerian and african context i know that there are many wrong things with many cultures all right there are very healthy sides of culture respect love for god but there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness 
that surrounds me and this light that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in Jesus Christ the moment Jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time I hear your voice number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god he came out from under the governing authority of that king and the bible says cain built a city a type of a kingdom after the name of his son enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then nimrod in genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus came he began to speak and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth he found where it was written in the book of Isaiah Isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the Holy Ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed Many of you who have gone on our Facebook, I'm sure you've, you've seen the great testimony that we have, the latest really that we have right now. Very powerful testimony. Hallelujah. About two or three um, Fridays ago, a woman, not even a believer, hallelujah, came and she stood outside here. Had cancer. Hallelujah. It was acute and, uh, you know, it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from Shika. Verified. Hallelujah. And she just stood here and saw people and said, what's happening here? And they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now 
instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of god or to make a name for the ministry all this nonsense that people do that's why a true servant of god will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom are you seeing that so if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel and we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesuses for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a says cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities true prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your bible cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities true prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade we've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them So it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you 
that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver and so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bail because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but shall don't bow and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor Are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord <laughs> and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogance. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth. Because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to Baal. And we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food. And you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four say language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected is called influence I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what is happening to her. She's happy and enjoying it. Although she cannot understand. This same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us, including the religious people. I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him. We all desire influence. For parents, when they call your child, and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am i talking help me yeah. 
how much more the king that you represent the bible says the hour has come john 17 verse 1 he said now the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how god gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me to reveal his glory and his majesty is found in psalms 145 and the hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if michael jackson just lift his hand and say i get i'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibu was having a thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love God like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffo preached his life out he said now that I have this caliber of people let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them let me tell you something there are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you it's your influence the bible says see it that way man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings i was watching the forbes forbes um first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible say for god so loved the world that you are hating <laughs> hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel oh and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages eight to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset, mindset. the world is a system that gives you a mindset i follow me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade 
but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the power of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of christ hallelujah sports number two in the area of arts music fashion this is an area that the church has neglected you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night and those people have paid their price they are competent so we say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity say the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just the revelation i say who and the keyboard is for 10 minutes he's trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth that's what i say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion let me i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs and we think god will do everything and you say i know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we don't invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will i give you a job when you are not competent why should i give you a job when you will make my company lose are you are you am i provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the holy spirit will give you believe what i'm saying i pray in tongues but we are the nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep beauty so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom 
many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and they will say hey it's happening in Nigeria. It's happening. where the it wasn't enacted by angels it was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a a, a, a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of <laughs> hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before People are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children
can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children they say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later <laughs> hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me back bring me back and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart hallelujah there are many parents that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says, i hate you i hate you and then in the night she flashes him and then he flashes her back Then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again or high. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say I'm sorry when they need to say I'm sorry. That kind of a family is not a true picture. The first example of God should be seen in a father. The first example of the Holy Spirit should be seen in a mother. The first example of unity should be found in the couples. Hallelujah. To train the children in the fear and the admonition of God. I have a dream. That after 20 years of marriage, you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing. No rat race, no fighting up and down. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's what you hear us singing. Because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy, we are adhering to it. Are you getting blessed? I'm provoking something. The last area, media. Right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free. It has already been paid. Satan paid people to prove that Jesus is not lord he's still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch hallelujah are you getting blessed the media it's just right now that there's a media revolution god is raising media giants for some of you as i mentioned this area something in your spirit says are you hearing are you hearing god is telling you are you hearing the moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you sweetheart you just say pastor who told you is pastor maybe it's media or fashion many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming they just bring water for you and say daddy sir if that is your concept of kingdom advancement there's need for real repentance tonight these areas are the areas that the church have left to the world and can I tell you something our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems that's why we are holding this teaching hallelujah but i know we are that generation that the next set of sports people i look forward to times when before they start playing 
while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and and scoring goals they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people and you tell them i speak under the authority of the lord whose i am and who i serve that statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say this is my mentor i'll do anything he's doing and now that he has mentioned jesus what is it about jesus and they begin to search and god will lead them to a site and they will check jesus is lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there and then you read and know let me tell you if we depend on only our fifty thousand and five hundred thousand man crusade to get people born again in the next hundred years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes i was checking her facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah coca-cola has 23 million and i check many churches 10 5 11 22 110 300 700 and then a few hundred thousand those are the mega ministries so can you see that christianity is not a call to laziness it's a call to service are you following me so after you get born again and you get filled with the holy ghost the holy ghost trains you and then he sends you and then he begins to call you he says oh no i'm releasing you to the it industry go and challenge the people steve jobs of blessed memory he has gone wherever he is hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Jones, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an events planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department doing this I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church the mission field is outside the church it said you are the light of the world not the church so we come and we are built we are equipped on monday you are at work in the bank and someone comes and while you are signing the check you see by the spirit and you say sir you've been having a challenge in your family and he looks and then you tell him i bring you the word of the lord i know that you're having a financial problem begin to tithe and be serious tithing is a principle of the kingdom and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say god bless you the king has found expression <laughs> hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government to say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah 
and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say it to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we are just thinking of how we we'll chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba -ba 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 -ba. i see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can i do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts look at the beautiful shirts by the media people this is an artistry and the creativity of one he is a minister but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give god glory hallelujah we believe in it i'm being practical and i'm sharing this dial is going for a, a a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country hallelujah he's going for a training he's the head of the media but it's not just about praying in tongues we realize that we have an agenda we are going we are invading the media and so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks certified every one of these media people you see them doing what they are doing they were trained because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a play a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer 
on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we are not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all he said lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you not all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god would give him songs and then he will write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it i look forward to times when when we tune our radio we just say your kingdom reigns bless god for heal song bless god i love them with my life they are real ambassadors of the kingdom real ambassadors of the kingdom they have no apology for exalting the name of God. if i have a company today you will hold bible study at least once a week in my company you are not interested it's not by force when poverty canes you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you you cannot reject us we are going to buy mtv we are going to buy channel o oh we will we will we will change it to miracle tv <laughs> Balakaya. we are not praying in tongues for nothing friends we may not look like it but let me tell you it's in you the bible says now are we the sons of god we are rising our parents like the eli generation have done their best and they are transferring the button to the samuels and we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they will come and meet you and someone want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no 
I represent a kingdom. Don't just say I don't do it. Someone comes to meet you and says, can you come to my hotel? I say, no, I don't do it. What you are just trying to say is that uh, I don't do it with you. You must let the person know that I represent a kingdom and I'm bounded by a modus operandi. And part of it is that we are not engaged in this. I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him. Hallelujah. Ejimi does designs. When you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. Ha. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time. At that time, we will gather on Sundays and pray. And every time we are praying, although they do not understand what we are saying, they cannot deny the effect. It's telling on their salaries. It's telling on the economy. You come and meet someone working in your office. And like Joseph, the person is depressed. And he said, what happened? He said, I was just told I have cancer. And he said, come with me. As the manager of the company said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cancer, go. And the person is healed. And he said, I thought it's only in church. And he says, to let you know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise arise it's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down the call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility we are going to pray we are out of time we will continue the next time I will be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom I really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom now you see that is beyond just getting born again rise up on your feet Above all, above all, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, above all, above all, above all, above all. Hey, hey. your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, above all. responsibility to directly promote the government of heaven in your class in your job you have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace there shall be no end how much of the king are you representing how much of his glory are you directly representing? Come on, pray. Pray. So pray. Pray. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. The influence of your kingdom. Your character. Your culture. Your lifestyle. Your way. In politics. In government. In music. In the media. 
to pray hear me hear me you're going to pray one prayer and say lord i receive grace to be competent hear me many of us right now from this meeting go and buy books go and buy dvds that address the area you know god has called you sit down and walk there's room for laziness generals are not lazy people Lift up your voice and pray. I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. And also for nominal Christianity. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. No matter what it is possible. Come on, pray. I pay the price to be competent. To be competent. He pays the influence of the kingdom. Inside and outside. Make sure you are praying. That's why you came for Koinonia tonight. To be equipped. To be empowered. Come on, pray. And say, Lord, you are sending me to the media. I will be competent. You are sending me to politics and government. I will be competent. You are sending me to the family ministry. I will be competent. You are sending me to fashion and style. Make sure you are praying. Whether you are a caterer, whether you are an event planner, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a banker, whether you are a politician, we all have the same mandate, the same responsibility. Whether you are a teacher, whether you are a student, advance his kingdom, advance his kingdom, advance his government. His kingdom, his influence is an everlasting kingdom. Make sure you are praying. Make the Make In ministry, I receive grace to be competent. In business, I receive grace to be competent. In every area, you have called me. I receive grace to be competent. For the sake of his majesty, for the sake of the kingdom, my generation will hear my voice. My confidence will give me a voice, and I will shout it. Everything. With everything. We will shout for your glory. We with your catering, with your banking, as a lecturer, as a computer mogul, as a business mogul, as an investment tycoon, as a pastor, with everything, we have one agenda. Advance the course of his kingdom. We will shout. Make sure you are singing this song as a prophetic revelation. Competence in culture, competence in catering, competence in event planning. As an architect, you are competent. As an engineer, you are competent. As a designer, you are competent. Come on, try. We will shout. We will shout. We will shout. The nations will know that Jesus is Lord. The nations will know that Jesus is King. The nations will know that He is alive. The nations will know that He rules above all. The nations will know that our God is alive.
glorify you with. Let it not come. What it means, a keyboardist. He pays the price morning till night, building himself. No matter how much you will give me, I will not compromise. No. No matter how much you pride me, I love my king. I am addicted to the king. There's no going back. It's beyond church. 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 It's an apostolic transformation. It's an apostolic transformation. is what Jesus died for. This is what Jesus died for. We not just win souls, but we advance our kingdom. So when you get people born again, don't leave them there. That's why God prepares Koinonia as a platform to equip people. Changing our minds there's no room for disobedience. There's no room for rebellion. We may be young people, but we are not lawless. We have a king above us. And we are going somewhere. That the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That the media of this world will become the media of our God. That the politics of this world will become the politics of our God. Hear me? And that's why you came here tonight. And for as many who are connecting on the internet and many others who will hear this tape and this, the DVDs, there is a clarion call. It's beyond church. It's beyond ENI. It's beyond koinonia. It's a, an apostolic reformation God is bringing upon the nations. Lord, we give you praise. We are out of time. You are worshipping with us for the first time. I'd like you to leave your seat and quickly come. Please, we're out of time. Let's hurry up. In this atmosphere, leave your seat inside and outside. Appreciate them. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Inside and outside. Young and old. If this is your first time, appreciate them. Come on, give them a big coin on your God bless you. Clap for them like kingdom citizens. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the king. You see one of our there fathers and our mother. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They are coming. Lord. Keep singing. They are coming. Yes, Lord. Just move yes, on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. Daddy, we especially want to thank you, sir. Mommy, we want to thank you. Thank you.